today we are going to cover and install the 1100 watt taxi garage upgrade motor kit battery combo. Here we have one of our rental fleet Can-Am carts. So this traveled the country with us doing our rental car fleet. This is stage one, it's gonna become an 1100 watt kit. I'm gonna give her a clean down and then cover the install. So this one's already had a pretty good life just doing all the rental stuff, but now it is headed to PRI, uh, where all of the companies that are in the racing industry all meet, kind of like SEMA, but it's a little bit more focused on racing itself. So go-karting, circle track drifting, road racing, drag racing, tractor racing, anything that's actually motorsport and racing. So our carts do fit in. Yeah, so anyway, this cart's going to the K&N booth, and then K&N will actually keep it and take it to their warehouse so then they can shoot content. It's exciting. Yeah, you know, we, this is the rental program setup. So it's our 36 volt, 250 watt, uh, and then we did the branding obviously for Can and stuff. So we're gonna start this install now. So to start of the install, right, so this one's got our battery, so we're gonna remove the lower screw, the two side screws, the battery's gonna come off, we're gonna disconnect it. Uh, a lot of the install is a lot like our 500, 900 watt setups, which you've probably watched the videos before. If you have not, there's also really good information in there. Um, but we're gonna cover that, because this somehow has a larger gear, which uses a T8F chain, opposed to the number 25 chain that the standard crazy car comes with, which then also includes the chain and all that. And then a heavy duty chain tensioner for the wider chain and doesn't wear out as fast because this one uses a lot more pressure. We have a stock small cart. We cover step by step everything to take it apart to get to the point of the install on this in that video. So 900, 500 watt motor install. We'll have all of that uh, laid out pretty thoroughly. So if you need that. Here's a tool that we offer on our website. It's a crow's foot that fits the headset bearings. This makes your life a lot easier for install and disassembly. Rotate it around and then it actually will so you can set this. This is the primary issue with these headset bearings that they're not properly installed or adjusted. Goodbye. All right, so we've got our whole front assembly off. Obviously we just loosened the headset bearings and disconnect the harness. The whole thing comes out as one. Uh, for the install of the new kit, we are gonna use the front wheel assembly and that's it. So eight millimeter. So a lot of people I see that they try to use a Phillips head here, which they're gonna strip if the gear is properly tightened. So it's hex head eight mil. All right. So we're gonna remove this. We re supply new hardware for here, so you don't need to use this either, but it's good to have just in case. This tire with 1100 watt. CST. Probably need CST. Change this and give it to someone that needs it. Now time to put on the 1100 watt gear, which is a 45 tooth, eight millimeter chain. Uh, so these are stainless, and then it has the spacer built into it for the alignment. Goes on your wheel like your stock one did. Now I do include longer hardware, which will also one, either repair the wheel if your threads are a little um, stripped, hub centric, so they're center. These ones you don't ever want to like crush on there because it's an aluminum wheel. I see you're using hand tools. I'm using hand tools. Seven to nine foot pounds of torque. So now our wheel is on. The direction of the tire is correct, which I've run them both ways. We haven't noticed any difference. Obviously, this is normally for watershed ability. Pretty much a near slick. That's together. All right, so now that we've got our whole front wheel assembly installed, new tire, the new chain that's provided in the kit, we have our neck, 1100 watt. We are going to install the supplied chain tensioner. Standard, same as all the other ones. I normally go third one from the bottom. So we will get that all in here and go on that third hole. And then you use a open-ended 10 on this side with the two flats and then just a standard 10 on the outside here. So you'll notice that the spring isn't hooked yet, just makes everything install easier. So this will actually just slide past that with a flat head, which I'll show you. I normally put it on this face here. You're gonna take your chain, it's gonna go on the top side here, for your gear, standard install here. I normally go on the back side of that, set it off the side of the table, go in the bottom here, make sure that my spacer is center. You always want your flat washer 
then your crush washer, then your nut. On any bolt that goes in anything. Some wheels you'll find that actually stays in place, sometimes you don't get so lucky. Okay. So I do recommend evenly tightening these. You want the axle bolt to be as even as possible. And then and now we're gonna roll this gear on. You always want to check the alignment here. This is the max this motor will fit in this whole thing. We're really jamming a lot in a small space. Make sure it rides there. And that was pretty close. The screwdriver. Grab the back side of that. And then get it past there and up on there. We set them pretty close to being aligned. But you always want to just make sure the alignment is as good as it can get. So these spacers too from Razor sometimes are a little bit different sizing. So you just want to loosen these up just a teensy bit. And we're going to adjust the motor visually. So I was thinking that it can go back this way a little bit, a little bit of movement there, and that helped the alignment. This side is threaded with a nut on the back side. The nut's more for continuity on each side to look like it's together. Uh, but you want to, these are actually threaded into the motor half. And then the bottom side is just a jam nut. So two side, two of these will be threaded, two of them will be just nut and bolted. So then now I'm going to come back to here to the jam nut. Still hold it because it'll try to loosen it as you tighten the jam nut. So that's looking pretty good. Happy with the alignment? Pretty happy with the alignment. You know, these ones we have pre-bent. Um, again, this needs to be checked as well. You know, using a set of pliers, like we've got them very, very close. There are some small, small details that can be adjusted, which will make everything better. But so far, the chain sounds looks really good. So now, you have to excuse the mess. We're moving into a new location, uh, oh, yeah. which fine. we've already talked about, but we haven't really shown. We've grown out of the space. Slidey's working here this, in our showroom. This, this space. Uh, we've got carts. Slidey, give me a smile. Oh my God. Controller bracket that's supplied uses the two factory screws. Just like our 500, 900 watt kits, same style bracket. All right, it's our 48 volt, 1100 watt controller. Send up the, the two on off connectors, which is the blue and the green, the blue and the red actually. Through the channel. Through the channel. And then on the on off switch, this is commonly messed up. You have your ground from the charge port, which is literally just for the light on the switch, which will most likely blow out on 48 volt anyway. That's just there for fun. And then you've got the two silver legs. These are the ones that actually control the switch. So orientation wise, does not matter which one goes where. Um, so whatever, it doesn't matter. But they both need to go to the silver tangs on the switch. This one is brown and will not allow the car to work. What's, what number of screwdriver is that? Number one. So number one screwdriver is what these screws are. This is the one single wire. Everyone always asks us, oh, why does it only have one wire? We delete the red wire on the charge port side because no longer charging through the controller. Just a ground lead. It doesn't even have to be plugged in for the cart to work. You want your red and the blue. The red and the blue go to the switch, the silver side of the switch again, just to make sure. So I push that red up and I push the black up behind the controller bracket. This gives you more room for wiring. And then this obviously comes up. So then I then rotate this back and go back into itself and then that makes it clean there. So now we're left with the, obviously, the power for the battery. The motor, which is normally labeled as long as you don't get ripped that off. Power and ground, which will feed the motor. Motors are reversible polarity, meaning they can spin both ways regardless of which way you do this. We spec this so the blue is the power, the green is the black, which will rotate the motor the correct direction. We go to a three wire pin, just like we normally do in all of our kits, and the stock six pin. Uh, we do provide a three pin connector to match this one, and you will delete the green and the yellow wire, and then you will remain the red, the black, and the white, which will be red, black, and green. Green and white go together. These do plug in and would work. 
um, but then this connector is very large and in the way, so then people like leave it all out here and look like it's like hobbled together. Depinning tool. I'm gonna start okay. building carts at this point. Yep, so you're gonna have your red, your black, which is for your motor wiring harness. We send this unpinned. So now we're gonna go to the three pin motor wiring. So this is for the controller to the throttle. So if you look in this connector, on the bottom side down here, there is a tang. And that holds the connector, the pin in the connector. So I take this pin and I will then push on it. So I normally flip this over so I can push downward. And I'm going to slide that pick down that hole right there and get that part of the pin. You will then take that and I like push and push on it as I'm doing it. And it will push it out the back. So what you can see is here is that this, this tang right here, my fingernails on, that right there, it's kind of hard to see, but that's what pushes in the connector. So what you're doing is you're coming down this pin and pushing on that. So what I kind of do is start to put pressure here, and as I'm pushing on that, it also pushes the connector out of the back of the connector. Push, now that one pin's out of the way, you have more room to get on it. So I will push on it and in, and that already did it. So then one more time, Let's see if it got on, yep, out. And then we're gonna do it one more time. On that tang, and down and in, and it's out. And then what I'll do is just snip the green and the yellow at the, the wire sheathing, cut the yellow, green and yellow, this goes in the trash can. So now we have our red, our black, and our white, which are, is our power, ground, signal. You can always match this because this is what really matters. So you're going to be like, oh my god, what pin goes where? Well. Red goes to red, black goes to black, white goes to green, which is the signal. Your red is gonna go in the red hole. So the one thing that you need to make sure, since you've depinned it, is you need to make sure that this tang is pulled out. So I basically put my fingernail under that and pull that pin. So that way, it will then snap back into the connector. And if you hold it very still for one second, so you, yeah, that little tang, that little tang, yeah. So then here you can look in this hole. So it's squared off at the bottom. And then it's got the tang at the top. Well, the tang lines up with that. Slide in the tang upward. When you push it in, it clips in. You want to hear the click. Exactly. So the same thing we'll do black, because that's the order of operation. Black in. You want to pull on it, make sure it's in. Same thing with the white. Push in, pull on it. So now we are good. I've seen where these don't get clipped in, or you don't get that tang all the way up. I've done it myself. Easy to happen. Um, but if you just ensure this, you're never going to have a problem. And then now you will plug into your controller. Make sure those all line up nice and smooth. And now, see that right there? Perfect explanation. See that push the white out? So we want to push that back in and, and just double check it. So what can happen is if you push this in, it can push the pin backwards. But now we're in and we're good. Okay, so one thing that kind of gets overlooked, uh, especially with the used cart, is headset bearings. So we sell a kit, it's just an OEM replacement kit. However, adjusting it and installing it the first time will give you longevity. A lot of times if these bearings, if this gets over tightened and these get crushed, you'll have a really notchy headset. Or if they get loose, these will wear out quite quickly, like any real bearing will do. I'm going to show you, just since we've got the new 1100 watt kit, we highly recommend pairing these with your kit it will just make everything fresh new and smooth so we've got the bearing races in here still I'm gonna knock these out uh, it's super easy all right so you're gonna go in and catch the edge of the bearing race and you're gonna knock it out you kind of want to go back and forth and it comes out so we're out now all right and you can see the the coppering in that race that's it wearing out in normal eyes, these races look completely the same. However, they're not. This one has a longer throat on it here and a longer throat in the bottom side here of the cup. This goes on the bottom. This helps take lateral force on the neck, opposed to the top one is just along for the ride. So this one's gonna go on the bottom. What are these bearings the exact same? Yes. Okay. These two bearings are the same. All right, throw hammers. Rubber mallet. Slide the bearing. Now this this does have a direction. So if you see the back side, there's this ring. Top the ball, balls. All, the balls always go towards the race. So from the bottom, from the neck, you have this bearing here, and then when you get to the top side of it, this bearing gets flipped over like this. Race, and then we take our so glide, not endorsed or sponsored at all, and we are going to put that just a little bit extra grease in each race. Just helps for. Can we use, always use a little more lube. So now it's time. Set her in there. <coughs> oh, 
You wanna, wanna make sure that bearing sits flush in there before you crush it. It won't. Then like this. Alrighty, so this is the headset tool I was speaking about earlier. It is a crow's foot that's thin wall, so it goes on the headset bearing nicely. We offer these on our website, they're cheap, last forever. Super nice tool to have. Set this headset bearing, so I hold the neck and I, I tighten it pretty moderately. When the neck still will spin a little bit, but you're setting the two braces, it's pulling them together and setting the bearing, but you don't wanna crank the ever-living hell out of this thing. Pretty tight. Then you have your washer, and then you have your jam nut. I've never seen that washer before in my life. XLs don't use it because Razor didn't make the throat of the neck long enough. Small carts use it and it really is supposed to be there. So then we will rotate the neck back this way. So right, so the, the bottom's already been tightened. So then we're gonna jam this top nut up onto the bottom nut. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come on the bottom side of this Hold the opposite side of the neck and loosen that up onto that top nut. So now it just got tight. And what that does is it sets preload on the bearing. And usually, if you do it right, perfect. Smooth, nice. No, Super smooth. No jaggedy. Now rumbling. you might have to do that one or two times to get the feeling of it because there is a feeling aspect that's not really a do it an eighth of a turn and it's good. Um, but usually put some preload on the bearing, set that one to that, and then rotate back. Usually will get you exactly where you want to go. All right, so now that we got the headset bearing set, we are going to do the motor wiring. Make sure that it comes out and it's flat, it's not all bound up here because this is always a failure point with anything that rotates on itself. You don't want it to be twisted, you want it to be flat. Flat, and then it's gonna rotate into the trough and go f feed down behind the controller. So you'll feed that down there, give it a little assistance, and then you'll find it coming down this trough right here. So this is where we will set the motor wiring length. So if you have this too long, it'll get caught in your steering stop. If you have it too short, it'll break the motor wiring. So what you wanna do is you wanna take it and rotate it all the way left. Make sure that that's still rolling flat and gets to the full lock there because that's when you're going to be backwards or doing whatever. So what I'll do is I'll then put it under the race a little bit and then I'll set that zip tie. So we're going to grab a zip tie which is supplied with the kit. This is a funny thing. So uh, <laughs> this is supposed to have a notch section in it in almost all the cards, but this one's really, really old. So it doesn't have it. So you have to feed the wiring through and get it up over that wire, which is not normal. Get it across this one. But anyway, sweet. And then what's the notch normally look like? Oh wow. So this trough. This one's sporting our 500 watt built by the one and only Miata Man. Pull that motor wiring tight. You always want to use flush cutters. Flush cutters again. Clean install. That way your zip tie is not cutting you. Now we will check this. It's just always good to visually check. But you want to go back and make sure your wiring is not getting all caught on the steering stop. That's how it should look. A nice, nice clean arc. Steering wheel time. So. Falls in there. I always put the tire facing me. Obviously, you probably want your arrow facing you. Tighten her up. So for me, then you'll give a little. For me, I for me I like to run my steering wheel about an, an inch up or a finger length. For shipping, we cannot have the steering wheel taller, so they all come down. So we're gonna do that now because we are shipping this cart to PRI. All right. Pin. So now now we're on to pinning the motor wiring harness, right? So we fed it through the trough. We're now pinning it. So you wanna put your boot, this is a dust boot, you know, moisture boot, whatever, get both your pins in there, slide them down out of the way. If you look at this, pin comes out, comes straight, and then has a little hook. And that little hook grabs the inside of the connector just like it's grabbing my fingernail. If this hook does not go all the way onto that metal tang inside the connector there, you will have problems. You see the, you see the little hook, the tang there, right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, We are going to go red to red, black to black. So uh, the tang facing down, and then the tang facing down. You're going to feed it in there, and you want to wiggle and hold, and snaps in. Don't get fooled by that first snap. All right, so you want to make sure you want to pull on this thing. This thing should not come off. You always want to make sure that this is flat and parallel. If you bend this up or bend this down, it's not going to make a clean install into the connector, right? If you try to put it in upside down, it will never go in. It won't even, it, it can't do it. So you want to go in, make it flat, make it flat, wiggle, hold, 
in. So you can see it, a clasp it there at the end of the connector. There's another video on our YouTube channel showing that as well, if you don't understand what I'm saying. All right, so now we are here. We're gonna go red to red, black to black, and we're gonna put the supplied Anderson lock. I like to have it where this wiring harness lays like this, and I like to have my Anderson lock sit upward so it sits in this trough when we put all the wiring in. So we're going to put the little mini zip tie. Not absolutely necessary, but it's nice for security and just, you know, if you're hitting a lot of bumps and all of that, it doesn't have your connector fall off and then now you have your battery taken off. Seen a lot of bad installs out there. Oh yeah. So we're now zip tied. We're now gonna flush cut this and our motor wiring is now done. So what I will do is that as the wiring comes trough down here, I then feed it back there and then I come up with this and the wiring will then sit in this this crevice right here. So when you put the battery on, the wiring will sit in this trough right here. Another one thing you want to do is just make sure that your wiring for your throttle is not getting all tangled up with all your other wiring because as your battery comes in, if this gets all wrapped up, this gets pulled in there and it makes your life harder than it should be. So we're now going to just keep this kind of out of the way and now it's time to put our battery in. So we're going to take our battery, we're going to slide it in the hole, and then I connect them here. Make sure you keep this out of the equation, and then our battery in. Now you can always just do it for fun before you bolt the battery on and see if we got it. So we still got more charge time to be had, but that thing sounds pretty spicy. We are going to put our Anderson lock on the battery as well. Go in the two holes there, lock it in place, grab the supplied zip tie, lock her in there. I do recommend pulling on the side of the connector, which makes the zip tie actually pull downward just to keep that in place. Again, these are just for safety, but so now here's the technique. So I normally stand at the back of the cart. I will then start to feed my battery through. I will feed my power wiring and everything to the left side of the cart. All right, so now it's over here. As I feed my battery over, you'll get your power wire on this left side. And this is where this starts to get kind of like, okay, what do I do? I've seen people leave it out here, which looks terrible. So we're going to slide that in and get it in here as well. And it's going to go past that and sit in the center. We're now gonna come around here and we're gonna push this connector up. So it sits in the trough, like I was saying before. And then on this other exact opposite side, our power wiring will sit there as well. And we will then come in, make sure that's flat, make sure our fuse is flat. And now our battery is on. All right, so this one kind of just sits on top here so you can just tuck it in so it's super clean. And then you just want to make sure that these aren't getting pressed on. So if they're high enough that when the battery goes on, then we'll take our battery hardware. All right, battery on there. Just want to tighten them in here. All right. Put our lower screw in. Don't forget the lower screw. Don't forget the right. lower screw. So you want to snug these. You don't want to tighten them all the way, but you want to snug them. So then you go upside down. And this is what ensures when you flip and crash and all the things that we do in the videos, which you're going to do. We're going to go in that hole right there. Show it. Now they know. So we're going to take an eighth inch drill bit, hold the battery, and we're going to go in the center there and you're going to carefully screw. We're going to screw this screw. So this just ensures the battery box isn't going to break. This ensures that the battery is not going to flop around. This is going to ensure warranty because this kit does have a six month warranty on it. If you do not put that screw in and the battery fails, well, that's one of the reasons it bouncing around and jumbling its brains out is not good for batteries. Not good for batteries. So this ensures that this battery box will absorb all the vibration. It has foam inside the battery and everything is proper. So when you flip, which you're going to, that keeps that battery in place. Alrighty, so we're gonna flip back over. Last step here for the install. Just make sure you tighten these up because all we did was snug them. All right, so we're gonna actually go to... And what size is that? This is a four millimeter Allen. So I have a wobble head just because it makes it a little bit easier, but I would prefer a straight one because overall, if you're not careful, you can strip the bolt. For the but all are welcome here. Okay. So this light is working currently. It's not for long. It's not gonna be for long. 
and we are ready to rip. K&N's ready to rip. We'll see you at PRI.